That's very good. You mentioned uh, improvisation a little bit ago, and we yeah. talked about this earlier. Um, I started out as a classical violinist as well. Really? At a much lower level, you know, third grade through college, but I was that's in the back that's playing quietly. Just I could be surrounded by people playing Rachmaninoff or something, and this is awesome, but I could play quietly and not be exposed. Yeah. All the way in the last the last chair, just being like, this is so rad. Right. Yeah. But no, I, I, there were certain times I'd be like, I uh, played like Strauss's Alpine Symphony. I'm yeah. in the back, and I'm like, oh, my God, these runs are so hard. <laughs> I'm freaking out. It's you know, kind of, you know, float a little bit above the bridge. Right. You know, just be like, no one would know the difference. But then I got no. really into <laughs> classical piano at a much, and it's harder to, to hide that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, point being, I came from a classical world with zero improvisation and right. have transitioned into much more of an improvisation style of uh, of music. And I know you made that transition as well. How yeah. was that... Um, you know, transitioning from that world into, you said, touring with a rock band for a while. Yeah. Uh, so the first band that I played with, I, like, I literally at one point just dropped my major to a minor um, in music performance. Mm -hmm. And I went to Western Washington University for my undergrad. And uh, I, I, it, it just, at the one point I was like, I don't, I don't want to be an orchestra drone. I don't want to be a human jukebox. Mm -hmm. And it was just this moment of just, I like really sad. I was just like, I want to be playing music, but I don't know, like, how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I had a friend of mine at the time was just like, hey, man, I'm starting a band. It's going to sound like, you know, Van Morrison's Astral Weeks, you mm -hmm. in? I'm like, I have no idea of any of those references because <laughs> my background's Prokofio and Smetna. And I was like, sure, why not? Yeah. And we just started jamming. And I was terrible. Mm -hmm. I really sucked, you know? And I think... Being thrown into the fire and then just being learning how to swim, like night after night after night after night after night, and then also losing a bit of ego from it too, because I think with a lot of classical mm -hmm. players, they're like, I can't mess up, you know, I don't want to, you know, you're playing an A6 and all of a sudden you play an E flat and you're like, oh God, I messed up. And it's like, no, like, yeah. don't worry about it. It's fine. Just let yourself go. Yeah. Like, and the more you will learn to swim, all of a sudden, all notes are on the table and it's amazing because all of a sudden like you know and what we were talking about earlier like you just find those favorite riffs and you just yeah, like yeah. you just jam on them you like from like a counterpoint perspective you elongate it you shorten it you do it in different keys you change the timing you do this and it's a, I, I feel like improvising is the most it's the purest way of really creating music mm -hmm. and classical players um, really improvising it was a huge part of classical music but i feel the cadenza. like yeah yeah no one a lot of people like when i first found out cadenzas were improvised i blew my mind i was like no way like yeah. they no way and then like you know cuz all these cadenzas are like written out note for note like oh, and they're yeah. they're can you, you know, imagine what it would have been like to hear Lisp play a cadenza or something oh my like god that. it would have it would have been um. Yeah, it would have been amazing. It would be like a Bud Powell or Charlie Parker. Right. Like it, it right. Would have been incredible. Yeah, and I think that's and that that's in and also in a part of that performance is the human error. Mm -hmm. You you allow yourself open to being in the moment mm -hmm. and the the creation of it. And it's like, I I wish classical music had more of that. I think that was the that was the thing that was so hard for me to find in classical music, at least with the current kind of mentality of just like. It's a, a curation, you know, where it's like we have a specific set of music and you have to play it this way. Because mm -hmm. I like I remember I played like La, the Lalo Symphony Espanol and I did it for like a master class and I played it my way. Like, you know, there was like one note I didn't vibrato on because I wanted that starkness of tone. Mm -hmm. And the violin professor is like, you messed up. That was terrible. And Lalo wouldn't have ever wanted it that way. I was like, how who made you the spokesperson for Lalo? Like. Right. And it was just, it was such an interesting thing. So with improvising, it's like, it doesn't matter. There's no pre-established, like, structure. You are the creator and the performer, and the exper you experience it all in, in real time. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's awesome. I mean, I can't, I can't speak enough about improvising. So, and, well, let's speak yeah. more about it. <laughs> well, I also, I, I mean, what we were talking about earlier is how you were, you know, you're learning banjo now, and you're using, the way you're learning banjo is through improvising. Right. And I think learning a new instrument just by, like, 
throwing yourself into it and just being like, I don't care. I have no ego about this. I'm, oop, messed up. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep on. Oh, it's the rock. ultimate ego buster. Like you were talking about earlier, yeah. getting into situations where, uh, you know, hey, Mike, do you know this song? Uh, nope. No. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. It's an A. One, two, three. All right. Yeah. Uh, all no, right. I love that. I And I mean. You hear the head once and it's like solo. Yeah. And then you just fall on your face. I, I'm at the point where sometimes I'll, <laughs> if I can play like 60% of a solo that sounds okay to me i'm like oh home, yeah, yeah. Home I, was like, I was like grand yeah. slam that was the best solo ever yeah and i um i mean i think one of the things that really blew my mind was i uh i went to so mark o'connor is a um like a jazz classical player yeah he's awesome yeah he's yeah. he's amazing so he has like there's these these fiddle camps that happen all over mm-hmm. the us different people have them and mark o'connor's got two one in san diego and one in nashville I went to his Nashville one like in 2006 or something, mm-hmm. and he brought fiddle players from everywhere. He had like an air who player from China. He had like some Indian raga violinist mm-hmm. that they greased his fingers to get the weird like, oh, yeah, you know, like, and there was like French Canadian, there was bluegrass, there was uh, jazz, there was doo-wop, there mm-hmm. was heavy metal. So you, you had this wide range of different violinists all playing the same instrument. Mm-hmm. And it was it like all of a sudden, it wasn't just improvising. It was improvising in a specific style, and it was so mind-boggling. And mm-hmm. just, like, that that right there, like, blew open the doors because I was like, okay, finally I'm playing. Because I always wanted to be in a rock band. Yeah. I always wanted, I was like, why are my parents starting me on violin? I want to be playing guitar, like, mm-hmm. or drums. Like, I wanted to be the dude just rocking out. And finally seeing the instrument contextualized in that format, like, hey... You have this huge palette to choose from. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, the violin's pretty cool now. You yeah, know? and it, yeah. I mean, that was that changed that changed everything. So now I'm like, nope, I'm that. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a lifer. Mm-hmm. So and it, but that's the thing that was so great is it's like learning how to play like a Stefan Grappelli solo, and then doing an Eddie South, and then doing like, okay, you know, like there's uh, this player from Belmont. University mm-hmm. in Nashville. I was telling you about this guy named Tracy Silverman. Yeah. He has a six-string violin. He has it strapped to his body like a guitar. He uses a half-size violin bow, but he plays it like it's a pick. And it's, I all I can say is <laughs> check you out. You see the image in my head right now. Uh, I know. All I can say all is like. check out Tracy Silverman. He does this thing. He does a cover of Carlos Santana's Europa. Oh yeah. And it's like the most amazing thing ever. Like it just blows my mind every time I watch it. I watch that. I'm like, okay, all right. I need to practice more. <laughs> but it's like, and it's yeah, it's incredible. And but that's the thing. That's the power of you know innovation and in improvising. Like mm-hmm. you just and he's improvising the vast majority of that. And just like the harmonics he's getting, the overtones, the and he it's it's full on electric like he's he you know when he when he's rocking on with the overdrive and the the, the wah pedal it's just yeah. like you can't distinguish it from a an electric guitar mm-hmm. it's amazing you know so i don't know what can i say about improvising i think well, everyone needs to learn it yeah you know no they definitely do especially classical players <laughs>